Good morning everyone, this is Rocco coming at you for another full self-driving video. This is 12.3.5, uh, this is the weekend after it came out unfortunately, so uh, this is going to be quite a bit delayed um, from before. I do want to make some comments on my first video of Saluda. And that was at night and of course I had this kayak on still. Um, I really don't think that it's going to um, cause issues. It did not have any issues perceived on 12.3.4 and in my opinion nor should it on 12.3.5. Now is it possible? Sure. Sure it's possible. But I really don't think so. All it's gonna, all it sees the camera, I obviously can't show you while it's driving, but um, the forward facing camera sees the top half of it is occluded by the bow of the boat. But the lower half is completely unoccluded and it just has a stripe down the middle because of the rope. Is, in my opinion, shouldn't really affect it. Now, we'll see. Now maybe it makes weird maneuvers as it goes. We'll see, uh, see as we uh, go down the road. But we are doing our Carl Sandburg route today. And we're gonna just see how it does on the highway. Now, I just realized I'm gonna have to change the profile to a different profile because I want to walk it in at 65 mile an hour and I don't well it, maybe if it goes to 70 I would be fine with that but I'm gonna do make, make it 65 just because of the kayak I don't I don't want to um, have it go too fast it's strapped down well but I don't know it makes me more comfortable I do want to address wait a second Oh, and I swapped between version 12 and 11. It's like, is it actually going to merge on the highway by itself? But it didn't. Um, so it's bumped us down to 70. The normal way I wouldn't need to intervene right there, but of course you had, uh, I had to for the sake of this. Also going to put on, going to put on chill mode and put minimal lane changes. I just don't, I don't want to deal with it with the, with the kayak on. Also, it really, turn on that blinker at a bad time. This car was about to pass me and it braked because I turned my blinker on it. I thought I was going to cut him off. That was actually a really bad time to turn on the blinker right there. Anyways, I do want to address something in my other video. Uh, the school zone. So, everyone that's watching that, the, the, you guys that support me in that decision, I appreciate it so much. Um, it is a school zone. But it's also 20 mile an hour, 24 seven, regardless of the school zone. It's 20 miles an hour right there. My car got up to 26 miles an hour before I disengaged. And I, in my opinion, it was gonna keep accelerating to at least 27 to 29 mile an hour with a police car sitting right there. If I got up to 29 mile an hour, the audacity for me to go nine miles an hour over the speed limit going past the police car, he was, you can't tell me he wouldn't would have pulled me over. Absolutely. There's no way. So, unless someone here thought about this, if someone wants to give me $200, you know, just give a strong donation, I will spotlight you in the video. Um, then I'll let it go up to five mile an hour over the speed limit going past the police car. Because you'll pay for my ticket. I probably actually won't pay for the full ticket. It's probably like $400 now for a ticket, I bet. I don't know. Maybe it's 200, I don't know. Definitely want to pay for a lawyer. Um, but if you want me to go the full speed over this limit, well, whatever, let the car do whatever, someone's gonna get give me $1,000, so I'm not getting points on my license without getting some benefit. So, I'm not gonna back down on that, guys. If you guys want to speed, you can do that. I'm not going to. Uh, at least until Tesla wants to pay for it. If Tesla wants to pay for the take ownership of the car speeding by all means let it go 20 over i don't care <laughs> if it wants to if they want to pay for the for the ticket and it doesn't affect my license then cool they can speed how much however much they want but until until then i'm not speeding the easy solution for this everyone is look you have chill average and assertive profiles if if you put it on chill it should maybe go up to like 10 percent over the speed limit that, that should be ab absolute most it should go over and even then may maybe not so that'd be up to seven mile an hour over on the highway you know maybe maybe not even on maybe uh, only a
couple mile an hour on the highway, but it like maybe it goes up to ten percent over to pass someone, and then it, it goes back down to like the speed limit or maybe two mile an hour over. Chill mode should just barely speed at all. Assertive mode should like be a normal driver. You probably go five to seven mile an hour over, maybe up to ten mile an hour over. It depends on the road. Drastically depends on the road. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get over here. But it's just it's one of those things that if, if someone wants to speed, it should be done in assertive mode. That's it. Like seriously speed. I'm talking like nine over and a twenty. Yeah, that's assertive. Uh, if you want to go, you no know, twelve over on the highway. If you want instead of going sixty-five here, you want to go seventy-five to eighty. Assertive mode. Like that. That should be how it how it works. It should not. It should base speed based on the drive mode, which they're going to have to get some more training data to do that. I'm guessing maybe that's what 12.4 or 12.5 is going to do, would be my hope. They'll do that, but we'll see. Tell me what you guys think down below, because I'm, I'm very strongly opinionated on the speed thing. I'm not going to go too fast. And see, right now, it's, it takes. this is something they need to improve. I think version 12 will fix. Like, it was just sitting there, not getting over. I don't know if it's because of the car behind me, or maybe I thought that truck was a little bit too close. That's happened several times for me, and needs to needs to improve. Okay, let's see how it does going off here. We're actually, oh, I just realized, we're taking a detour down this road right here. So, let's go see if we can quickly reroute. I love that they finally fixed this, guys. And Tesla, if you're watching, whoever fixed nav rerouting i want to buy you a beer or buy you a dinner or something i don't know because that was the most infuriating thing it, it, it was that way for a solid two years a solid two years um beta testing i related it directly it was only the beta testers that had that problem no one else so, so i don't know what exactly about the beta caused that but it drove me insane because you wanted to reroute somewhere it literally would take three to five minutes Three to five minutes to reroute somewhere. Uh, as you can see there, it took all of 10 seconds. And which is it's exactly what I would expect it to do. Very good. And I'm so glad that's fixed. In my opinion, the kayak, at least during the day, makes no difference. Now maybe it was because it was at night. And if you guys really want me to redo the Saluda drive on this version, I will during the day. But I'm probably gonna wait till the next version to redo it. And at the same time, I might not have the kayak on the roof. Um, the only reason I have is because I intend to go out and use it tomorrow. So, and then I'll probably have it have it taken off the roof. But uh, we're about to stop right here. I will bring you back once we're out. When we are back in the parking lot, about to leave. Um. So, one thing I'm going to try, once I'm out away from this car here, is, you know, let's see what happens in the parking lot. This is just bonus footage. There's someone behind me, so I'm having to press the accelerator to get it to go. So we're not going to really, and if it doesn't turn right, yep, yeah. okay. So we're obviously not going to count these distance engagements, but this is good training data for Tesla. Also, look at this, this car, oh. And so I just waved the car on. So how's the road actually gonna do that? Oh, my car also wants to go to left. We're leaving. So it thinks the road is that way. So this is gonna be a very interesting. Also, look at this. We're meeting this car head on. They're backing up. Oh, he has a trailer. Oh, okay. That's a little bit different. So <laughs> now, now the car has to understand that this guy has a trailer. I'm like, okay, well, he's not coming this way and he's backing up, so. He's not going to come past me. So yeah, this is like super edge case here. I'm just going to go ahead and tap that snapshot button. I'm just, I'm fortunate enough I have that to be able to click scenarios like this. I think they, maybe they just didn't bother taking off the build or I might have been still in their system for a certain way. Oh, also, they wanted us to go that way, but this is the way that our normal route goes. So we're going to go this way. Yeah, um, 
hopefully that gives them some good parking lot data because obviously it's not ready for that. Um, do I think that it's going to stop robo taxis from happening? No. They're going to still be able to make curb to curb robo taxis without parking lots. That that will happen. I still think next year they will have a curb to curb robo taxi. I think that is going to, in some state, somewhere, they're going to have it, make it happen. So that's the current thought. Let's see how it does making this turn. It can actually go right now, but there's a truck coming. No, actually, uh, there's a person behind me. I, I'm not gonna, so I slightly tapped the accelerator and it realized that truck behind me was turning, so it decided to go. So, those little interventions uh, are um, important because it tells the car, hey, you're good to go in this situation. So it sends that training data back to Tesla to improve it. So really in your first testing, you know, let it do, let the car, you know, push the limits a little bit. But you really should, if a car's not doing what you would do, you should intervene. You should push the accelerator a little bit. You should change the speed. You should disengage if it's doing something not safe. That's, that's what Tesla wants you to do. They need that training data. They are able to absorb so much more training data now that they can actually, you know, it's yeah, accept it and be able to refine it a lot quicker. And my hope is just even that little accelerator press will help unprotected lefts be a little bit more confident. Now, what it should be doing is getting in the left lane here, and it's not going to. I don't like that it does this on this road. I'm going to let it do it for the sake of testing purposes but in my opinion it I should make the car get over in the left lane it's too late now but it should have done that there's a person on Twitter I think it was edge case I don't know your actual name but um, if you happen to watch this clip um, he makes really good simple clips or I said Twitter it's now X um, but he makes really good clips that are easy to digest with the screen and then like the video on top and um, he made a comment about the car slowing down too much. Uh, and so I like that. For hypermiling, that is gonna be very important. You'd be surprised how more efficient you can be by just slowing down more conservatively at lights and not accelerating too quickly. I think the I think they're gonna uh, turn a robotaxi into a hypermiling hyper beast because you can get 10 to 20 percent more efficiency just by hypermyelin. That person straight up ran that red light. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is, we have to get over it. So unless my car speeds up, is it going to turn on the blinker? <sighs> and see, that's not good behavior in my opinion. It's just not. It shouldn't do that. At least, I mean, come on, if you're going to do that, turn the blinker on. At least do that. Anyways, off that ramp. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was talking about before that. I guess about the, uh, about the speeding up and slowing down for the intersection there. The car should, oh yeah, hypermiling, that's what it was. Yeah, so if Tesla's goal is to make the most sustainable cars then it should be able to hypermile its current cars. It's gonna get so good that the efficiency numbers, it's probably gonna actually match the EPA numbers. Because right now, not most people would never get the EPA numbers. You just don't. You, 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 get, you get below that. Is it a problem? No, not normally. But you, you're not gonna get the EPA numbers. But if you hypermile, you know, if, you, if you're just around town, it's where it matters most then you you will not only will you get it you'll probably beat it you'll probably get more range than stated so if you're driving like 30 40 mile an hour and you're hypermiling instead of 300 miles of range you're gonna get probably 310 you know a little bit more so all day long you're gonna get as long as you're con driving constantly and then you're, you know you're gonna get all day range it seems slightly improved on this road with this construction. There was like no hesitancy. Either they updated the map data, which I don't think is the case. Hey, I'm not actually, I'm, I'm actually was looking ahead above the screen, like out the window. 
maybe I wasn't looking directly forward at the road, but I was still, my peripheral vision was on the road. So that was a false positive right there. That was good behavior. It started creeping up as soon as the light changed instead of after the car started, that truck started moving. And it, a little bit better turning here. It stayed, it's hard to describe unless you've seen my previous videos, but it would cut that corner too much before and now it uh, kind of took a little bit wider turn, which is good. I see it's going up to 41 here. This is another road where five mile an hour is fine, but what's gonna happen, it's gonna go to a 25. There's gonna be a 25 zone right here. And they do want you, police cars sit there. They put that in a couple years ago because people were speeding through and probably someone got hit. And it used to be 35 all the way through that area. And then they adjusted the speed limit down. It even has a sign right here that says 25 mile an hour coming up. And we're going 43. And you can even see a digital sign right here. It shows your speed. It says I'm going 41, right? Is it slowing down? No. Car is going 15 miles an hour over the speed limit. This is not acceptable in this area. Guys, I'm not going 15 over. Again, if someone wants to give me $1,000, I'll go 15 over. As long as it's not a cop car. I'm going to disable it a cop car. But I'll go 15 over in general. Someone give me $1,000 and I'll, I'll speed. But all the haters, you ain't going to do it. You ain't doing it. <laughs> I'm not seeing anyone give me a thousand dollars. You can give it right there on YouTube. Just give me a whole bunch of whatever the the you can give give donations within the YouTube page. No one's gonna give it. No, the, there's someone that gave me like five five ten dollars one time. And it's like that was super appreciated. That was amazing. But I'm not expecting you guys to give me five ten dollar donations to speed. I want one person, one hater that says, "Oh, you're not gonna speed." To give me two hundred dollars or give me a thousand dollars. So I can justify the, the cost of a ticket. But until that day, I'm going to disengage going 15 mile an hour over the speed limit. That is absolutely unacceptable. We're ready to go on a hike, guys. Uh, so I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.